and on to question four. So on question four, I've got this two-dimensional array, and keep in mind that traversing two-dimensional arrays is one of the big concepts we like to see on the free response questions. Um, so I've got these integers inside this two-dimensional array, and I've got this idea of a position class. So this position class is going to be a particular position at a particular row and a particular uh, column. So we're going to have to iterate through this array and do something with it dealing with a position object. So we're either going to be creating position objects or referring to position objects. So I'm going to have to have some function called find position. And the idea behind this find position is I'm going to have to go through the array and return a position object, whatever the position is of this number inside my array. Now one of the things that you'll notice here is that none of these numbers repeat. And although it's not explicitly stated that all of these numbers are going to repeat, uh, they do say that they are successors. Uh, so we're looking at things that follow one after the other. So I'm really looking at things that won't repeat. So we just need to find the first occurrence. So what I need to do is I need to go through this array, row by row, column by column, searching for num. And if I find it, then I want to create a position object. If I don't find it, if it's not in my array, then I'm going to return a null. So I'm going to have to go through this row by row. So I'm going to say for int r gets 0, r is less than int r dot length r plus plus. That's going to go row by row. And then I want to go column by column. So for int c gets 0, c is less than int r sub 0, because I want to know the length of that row, c plus plus. And then what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to say if the number is in that particular row and column for int r. So if num is equal to int r sub r sub c, then I want to make sure that I return a position object. So I'm going to return a new position. And keep in mind that the position constructor uses the row and the, con the column. So I'm going to pass r comma c as parameters to this position class. So if I go through this loop and at any point my num matches one of the elements in my int array, I'm going to create a new position object for that row and that column, and I'm going to return it. But if I get through all of this, I still have to return something. And the provision is, if I go through everything and I don't find it, if I never hit this equals equals, then I want to go ahead and return null. So that's part A. On part B, now what we need to do is we need to write a static method called getSuccessorArray. And what this is going to do is we're going to be creating a two-dimensional array, but notice that these are arrays of positions. So I'm going to have to create a position object for each one of these elements in the array. And in order to do this, I'm going to use the function that we just wrote. Notice that it says assume that find position works as specified. Remember that find position, if I do find position of a num, that's going to give me a position object with a particular row and column where it's found. What's different though is I'm looking for the successors. So what comes after a 5? Well, a 6 does. And a 6 is located in row 1, column 3. So notice that here I get a row 1 and a column 3. What comes after 6? Well, a 7 does. And the position of 7 is in the second row in the third column. So this is a second row, third column. And of course, the problem is if I have a 16 here, the successor of 16 is 17, which doesn't show up anywhere in here. And so that means that I get a null in that particular spot. So what I'm going to want to do is I want to go row by row, column by column. And I'm going to find 
the element that's there. I'm going to look for its successor and find the position of its successor in the array and that's what actually gets created in this spot. So that's what we're going to have to write. Keep in mind I'm trying to return a position two-dimensional array so I want to create a position two-dimensional array. So I'm going to say position two-dimensional array. I'm going to go ahead and call this pause and this is going to be a new position with the rows equal to whatever the length of this int array is. And the columns equal to whatever the length of one row is. So int r sub zero dot length. And I'm going to create that. And now what I want to do is I want to go through this original matrix, the matrix of integers. This is our int r. And I want to go through this and I'm going to say for int r gets 0, r is less than int r dot length r plus plus, and then for int c gets 0 c is less than int r dot sub zero dot length c plus plus and I'm gonna go through this and I need to get the position so int num is going to be whatever is at that particular spot int r uh, for that row and that column. In other words, for me, num is going to be the 5. And then I'm going to look for whatever comes next. So I'm going to look for whatever the successor is of num, num plus 1 in other words. And I'm going to say that pause at position r c is going to be equal to whatever find position gives me. Remember that I assume this method works and I'm looking for num plus plus or num plus one in int array and that's going to fill that spot that's going to go over to this array and say oh six is in the second row the third first row third column so one three gets put into this spot the successor to six is seven which is in the second row third column so that's what gets put in that spot. And this table gets filled up by all of these positions. And then of course the thing I have to remember is that I've created this position object. Now I need to return pause.